Hi, I'm Paul Thompson, Motion Product Specialist with Werner Electric Supply, here today to show you how to configure a Kinetics 5300 servo drive. I'm going to start out by just making sure that I've got communication to my PLC, and I do. The next thing I'm going to do is launch Studio 5000 and create a new project. In this case, I'm using a 5069 L306 ERM processor, and I will call my file today, Kinetics 5300 demo. And I will go next. I'm using V33. This product's available in V33 and up. And I'll hit finish. Now that the file's generated, there's a few quick changes that I want to make in the controller properties before I start configuring. First is, for this type of processor, there are two different IP mo modes, and I want to set my controller to linear for the IP mode. And I also want to go to my date slash time tab and enable time synchronization for this project. Once I'm complete with those steps, I can start adding in my axes and adding my drives into my Ethernet tree. I'll start off by just adding the drives in on the Ethernet tree, right-clicking my Ethernet node and picking New. And once the display launches, I'll search for the drive that I've got, which is a Kinetics 5300. The catalog number is 2198 dash C1004 dash ERS. I'll create it. And I need to give it a name. I'll call this one Drive 1. I need to specify its IP address. This one's 192.168.1.24. And I'll let that create. I'll do the second one, and then we'll come back and change a couple settings in there real quick. So the second one will be the same thing, but I'll name it Drive2, and its IP address will be 192.168.1.25. With both of those created, there's just a few changes that we need to make in the drive properties for both of those drives. And the first thing that we'll change is we'll go into the power settings and configure the drive for the correct voltage and phase that we're using today. So on the power tab, I'm going to select 110 to 120 volt. Single phase, I'm going to leave all the shunt settings as internal, apply those settings. And then the second thing I want to do is go to the digital input tab. And by default, input 1 is set to enable. If you don't have anything wired up to input 1 and it's set to enable, uh, the drive won't run like that. You have to go and unassign that or set it appropriately. Or if it is used as an enable input, you just have to make sure that it's turned on in order to use your drives. I'll do the same thing for the second drive just to get it to the same state. Twenty single phase, unassign that input, and we're good. So I've added both of my drives to the tree, configured the necessary settings to get it to work for my application. The next thing I'm going to do is create my motion group and add my axes into my motion group. So there's my group. I'm going to create my first Access and for all the Ethernet drives, you always use access SIP drive as your access type. So I'll call this access one to match my drive one. And I'll do the same thing and make a access two to match my drive two. I'll open up the settings for access one. And I'm going to assign it to drive one for its module. And then I'll apply that change just to let that all take effect. It's 
just going to change some other attributes once it's assigned to that drive. The next thing I want to do is go to my motor tab. I'm going to set the data source to catalog number, hit the change catalog number button, and I'm using a TLP A046 motor today. That's the part number there. I'll assign that. And once that's in there, I'll hit apply. And there is one other change that I'm going to make on my parameter list tab. And this would depend, whether you do this or not, would depend on if you're using the battery-backed feedback. In my case, I am not using the battery-backed feedback, so I want to set my battery absolute parameter to no. And those will be the settings that I need to put in place just in order to get this axis spinning. Obviously, I could do tuning and other things from there to improve the performance, but just for the for the sake of this demo, we're going to keep it simple and just do the bare minimum to get it up and running. I'll do the same steps for the second axis. Assign the drive. Catalog number, change, TLP, assign that motor in there, apply that change. And go to my parameter list and disable that battery back feedback. And say OK. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my communications, who active, expand my USB driver. That's how I'm communicating to my controller. I will set my project path and go ahead and download the file. So while the file downloads, you'll notice I didn't go in and write any code or add any motion instructions. For today's demonstration, I'm just going to be using some motion direct commands. Uh, but obviously, for your application, you'll need to include some, some code to do whatever your machine functionality is uh, in the controller. But just for basic uh, jogging capability and startup and uh, demonstration purposes, we can use the the built-in motion direct commands, which I'll show here in, in just a moment. All right, the download completed. I'm in run mode. I want to just take a look here and see when I click on my axes and I look at my quick watch window. Again, if you don't have this quick watch window, you can click at the bottom here and just drag it up. And whatever you click on in your controller organizer, it will show uh, status about that here. So axis one, it tells me I'm in the stop state. That's good, that's where I want to be. That means that the download happened correctly. I've got the voltage I need in order to run. I just haven't enabled or, or been given a, a command yet for that axis. Same thing here with axis two. We're in the stop state. That's good, that's where we want to be. I'm going to right click axis one and select motion direct commands, which will launch the motion direct command window. The first instruction I'm going to run would be the motion servo on, MSO. I just select it, keep axis one going there, and I'm going to hit execute. You'll see when I do that, that the axis state goes from stopped to the running state. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just switch over to axis two and enable axis two as well. Now there's a variety of motion instructions in here that I can run on these axes. Um, for this demonstration, I'm just going to go to axis two. I'll enable a gear instruction, set my ratio to, uh, let's just go with a ratio of two. And in this case, the master's axis one, the slave is my axis two. And I'm going to execute that gear instruction. So now axis two is geared to axis one. Of course, axis one isn't moving yet, so we haven't seen anything take off. But I'll go to a uh, motion axis jog instruction and pick out axis one and give it a command to run. And we should see both motors take off and start moving as we go. Uh, and from here, we can just run a variety of other motion instructions. I can speed this up, slow this down, um, kind of do whatever I need to do uh, in order to do my setup. And from there, once that's all done, in order to shut everything off, uh, typically I would run a motion axis stop on the axis that's moving. And from there, I would do a motion servo off to release the torque on the motor shaft. So I'll run the MSF on axis one. And you'll see it goes to the stop state. And I'll run the MSF on axis two. 
and that goes to the stop state as well. And that completes the uh, configuration and quick demo for today's video. If you'd like to learn more about the Kinetics 5300, please reach out to me or your local Werner Electric Supply account manager.